opening up my my cans of paint. Melissa Leaf says hi. Hello, Melissa. I'm reading a comment. I'm reading a comment at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I know a lot of people relate to that. We're all kind of in the same boat. What I do like about this is, is that I'm not alone. We're not alone. You know, we're all experiencing this, this challenge together, being at home and having to having to change lifestyle. So this is my workflow right here is water. So whenever my hand goes here, I know you can't see it, but but that's water. And then I go right to the towel every time. And if you want to know more about this, just watch my four-year-old do it uh, on Instagram, one of my most recent posts. But this, you know, it's water, uh, towel, and then paint. And so I'm going to start out here with a... Uh, some kind of a background so i'm thinking about it and you know what i really love what i really love is i love when there's like a galaxy scene behind an atmosphere scene with like clouds and everything and i've never done that so i think it's time so how about just start throwing some colors up on there and see what kind of background can be made Maybe I should use the bigger brush for this one here. Bigger brush. Because I don't want to start doing details before it's time. So I got I gotta, you know, just break free from trying to manually create everything and see what the picture is gonna do first. You know, uh, I think it was in the movie Jurassic Park. Man, the things we learn from movies, right? We're <laughs> a media society, I think. Some of the uh, some of the things that just seem like life lessons that have really stuck with me, I think, but where did I ever hear that? Oh, a movie. So anyway, Jurassic Park is one of those. I forget the actor's name, he's real famous. He says, yeah, you're so consumed with whether or not you could, you didn't think about whether or not you should. And so when it comes to details, it's a valuable thing to ask is, should, should I do it before you move on to, could you do it, you know? And so this is not a moment when I should do details. This is a moment when I can just see what kind of shapes turn out if I just start blending some fun colors together. And I know that I don't get a lot of like grayish tones, but when you mix really different colors, opposite colors, you get kind of gray. But if I mix blue and magenta, this is strategic mixing these two because the result stays stays pretty vivid. Here's a technique that that maybe you've seen in a lot of my videos where I just lightly pull the brush across paint as it's drying, it's water-based paint. And so, uh, and so it dries very quickly and that allows me to quickly pull the, the brush across as it's getting thicker and thicker and the brush strokes disappear. And so it's timing, it's timing and, and getting the thickness quickly leveled out. You know, I just get, get it all pretty even a thin coat of half dry paint and then just pull that brush across it. So now I think what would be cool is I've never done this before, but I think it'd be cool if I added green. Oh, my green, my thalo green, where they are. Oh, oh, thalo green. This is actually a uh, this is, this is actually a PPG paint, so a different brand there. You know, I'm still not sponsored by anybody, so you can always rely on whatever I my preferences end up being. You, you can count on them not being because of 
any business deal or else I would have a lot more money. Okay, I want some green in there because I think it'll look pretty. And after I get this all smoothed out, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna paint the negative space in there. So negative space is just the space in between the object being focused on, you know, what, whatever the object is that, that is the subject, negative space is the space in between. Now, it looks easy when Joe painted it. I, I feel like this is easy. This, this right here seemed easy, but when I stop and really consider the mechanics of it, it's not easy because uh, you know, just just like holding a pencil for the first time takes practice before a child can control where the line goes. I forget that there are just common motor skills, just common mechanics to whipping a brush around at the same distance on on the canvas, you know, maintaining the distance, being sensitive to I forget those things. So it is good for you to remind me that I make it look easy but it's not actually easy. Oh, you know what that color was that I pulled out and then left, it was black. I need black. Give me just a second to get that black. Okay. Hopefully this doesn't become a comic moment when all the stuff goes crashing off camera. Black. That's what I open it. Yeah. Okay, we'll put the black down here. <laughs> you got to see this workspace. This is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, I can take that camera off. I'm going to take it off and show you this. I've got a computer desk that is no longer accessible. Okay, there's the black. We'll just kind of pull it out there. <laughs> Look at this. Here's my there's my workspace. All right, I can see all your comments streaming in. And uh, I can't get to my keyboard, won't be typing anything. And then my black I just put down there. So I gotta remember the black is there and the green is there, and all the other colors are here. <laughs> And then I gotta be careful not to bump them. All right, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's get back to the painting. All right, so here's a way to paint negative space. You know, I'm always studying the way things move apart. And I've talked about this before, but you know, it's always fun to revisit it. Repeating patterns in nature just fascinate me. And so, I noticed that there's a pattern to splitting. Things will split apart. And whatever is splitting apart, whether it be an atmosphere or the bark of a tree or paint on the old fascia boards of my house, they all share a similar pattern. And, and so learning that pattern really helps me to paint more believable, organic looking split patterns and likewise any kind of pattern there's so many patterns uh all, all over nature and so uh for whatever reason i i just can't help but search for those all day long my my family often wonders why i'm why i'm spacing out well, you know what are you thinking about okay I, my wife will say okay it feels like i just lost you when we're in conversation and there's there's sometimes when when uh, I genuinely did check out and it's a bad habit you know I don't want to justify that it's a bad habit but but I want to let you know that usually it's this kind of irrelevant stuff irrelevant to the situation but my mind just goes there it's like I'm noticing a pattern as I talk I'm noticing some pattern on your face and it's weird if I just start talking about it because we're trying to work out what we're going to do about the kids' school or something, <laughs> something serious. 
Okay, so watch this. Now I've got some split patterns and I'm gonna get that big brush again. And I'm gonna see if I can just do that same trick. And just hit it at, at just the right time to blend the edges out, clean the brush off or get the excess off, go a slightly different direction like this. So this is the pattern. The pattern is that the splits tend to evenly distribute and stagger each other, you know, so, <clears throat> so you don't seem to have the ends of this one pointing right to the ends of the next one. They seem to go like this to evenly distribute the spreading a part of the surface. And so then what will happen is you'll have uh, you'll have little splits, smaller splits that come off of those and connect together, maybe in this direction, maybe if there's more of a uniform direction, like on cracking paint. But I think with, well, probably with clouds too, you know. So sometimes it's a lot, lot more geometric where there's all these kind of 90 degree turns, but, but then other times there, there's just a bunch of random little like Y patterns in it. But as long as long as I remember to make all these little points, not point to each other, but point alongside each other, then it seems like I get much more organic looking split patterns. And so then let's put a big dark spot like this and maybe blend this out. And I feel like it'd be cool to put some more blue in there, make some blue into that black. And whenever it turns green, so blue turns green when it mixes with anything. And so magenta fixes that. Magenta is the fix for the problem of green. Okay, we put that in there, put this in here. I'm gonna let that dry up a little bit. This all dried up in here, so I can't do much with that right now, except for add more paint. So here's what I'll do. Now I've got that. Oh. Okay, let's go this way. Maybe go that way. Okay, I'm just looking to soften all my edges. And then what I'm gonna do is come back in and while that black maybe is still drying, maybe I can put some of those bright colors back in there. So I'll get some green, some green, where was that green? And now nah, I don't want green, I changed my mind. Let's leave it there for later and let's do blue. And I'm gonna see if I can come in here and work some of this back in, get this purple color and I had some white in there. So I'm going to bring this back in to these edges, wherever I have edges that just look a little bit sloppy, you know, not nice and soft like that, like that split apart cloudy effect that I'm looking for. Oh man, look, I just over dipped my brush. Oh, hate when that happens. It's because I'm, it's because I'm dipping blind, you know, I, I can't lift my head high enough to see how much paint's in the can. So I wiggle my brush as it goes down. When I feel the resistance, I'm like, oh, it found the paint. That's how I do it. <laughs> all right, all right. It's gonna be time to move on here to the next part in just a second. But I want to just blend some of these edges that don't look as good as the rest. So get some white, maybe grab some of that blue, go up in here. There we go. And whatever looks the worst, that'll be where I just paint clouds over it, you know. I just wanted to have one biggest area of this dark 
this dark kind of split pattern in there. And then a few small areas. So now I'm just kind of grabbing it and dragging it across here. If I can get some of this while it's still wet, I, I can maybe make a few more little little split patterns in there. Little little darker spots in my night sky. It's funny because you wouldn't think that looking at paint cracking apart on the side of my house would be helpful in painting something spacey, you know, but, but it ends up being helpful because something about the physics that makes the patterns in nature, there's a lot of things in common. I'm just trying to get rid of, you know, I'm not really looking to, I'm not looking at the picture I'm painting as much as looking for bad brush strokes. And so, you know, maybe that's a, a good tip for, for you in, in creative mode, uh, you know, systemizing your workflow to be about looking for the kind of brush strokes that you've identified to be problems. And so I'm looking for strokes that have hard edges and don't look like they're blending their way into the black. And so I'm not looking at my overall picture thinking, what does it need and where can I adjust as much as just looking for those, those strokes that have potential to be a eyesore or distract from, from what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay, I like that. I like that pattern that I'm getting there. Let's get a little more black in here too. A little bit darker in there. A little darker there, maybe like that. This is going to be cool when I flick it with a bunch of little, you know, like get a little brush and flick it with a bunch of little white spots or something. Yeah, we'll go down in here, put a little more there. That's got to dry for a moment before I can. I don't, you know, I want to do some nice bright clouds over it. And I know that if I just go right on to it, then some of that's going to pick up. So it just needs a moment to dry. So I've got a little bit of time to kill doing some details here. Details. <laughs> Again, that Instagram video is my, my five-year-old doing the, doing the details on his face it made my day. This is how you, and then you just do the details. He's got a paintbrush painting his face. I'm going to experiment with it, with the uh, lighting here a little bit and see if we can get uh, as little glare as possible. I'm going to stand where you are for a moment to make sure that we've got a good view of, of the painting. Sorry. Sorry, you're looking at the back of my ugly neck. Let's go like that. Okay. Just a little bit more in here. Look, I'm going to use this darker. This doesn't have as much white added, and so that makes it really ideal for going around in between the, the black and my lighter color that does have the white. So right in here, it's good transition color. Because you lose color when things mix, and so I, I refer to it as a transition color when it's for the specific purpose of, of replacing the color that would be lost in the transition of, of the mixing in, into a very different color. All right, I'll mess with that later. Now, I'm thinking it would be cool to put a big bright cloud in there. So I'm gonna rinse my brush and what I did was I, I tried to keep this dark on purpose so that it looks like a darker sky. 
behind a big cloud when I paint this. So I'm going to go over here now and put a, I'm going to lose a lot of this in the process. That's going to be kind of sad. Let's put it over here. Yeah, just that little bit of green in there. Feel bad making the green go away. It is a great color. Not that I can't just paint it over again somewhere else. Okay, let's put a cloud right in here. And so now, this is where I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna think too hard about what would happen if the light was here or there. I just want a big glowing cloud because I think it'll look great. And so what I'm gonna do is use red. Red is, is a real good pink cloud. If you use this magenta, uh, you know, if, well, for me, it's it doesn't make as nice of a illuminated pink color. So on the edges, I'm going to use more of this red. And then I'm going to start adding brighter color that is moving toward yellow. This is the, the rule of shifting hues, I like to call it, where, where the color moves toward yellow as something is illuminated from the inside. So on the edges here, I'm using red and I'm putting enough red in there that it's gonna turn into this gray violet when it hits that green that's under it. So instead of fighting that green, I'm just gonna use it. See, I will use your power for my purposes. There you go. This is the one world where I'm in charge. You know, it's fun. Maybe this is what's so fun about creativity is, you know, in a otherwise <laughs> repeating cycle of having no control in life. This is, this is where you get to be in control is when you get creative, you know. <laughs> Me and my brother, Ben, we always have fun talking talking the ridiculous philosophy about the human mind, you know, what makes us tick, what we're after in life. Just tried posting a video like that, and uh, I think it was more annoying. <laughs> Didn't get the greatest feedback. You know, you try things. But uh, apparently people watch my channel to see somebody paint something. And... <laughs> Not to see endless cycles of searching for meaning, philosophical meaning in life. But it runs in my family. You can't help it. You can't help it. We just hopelessly, uh, to no end, think deep. Or at least what seems deep to us. You know, every deep thinker maybe is convinced that he or she is thinking really deep, but I'm not convinced that any of us actually are thinking that deep. <laughs> okay. So up here, I just, you know, I just thought of this. I want a darker cloud coming across here like this. And then what I'll do is put some orange in there. So let's do red and yellow we need a little bit of yellow in here whoa that's a lot of yellow here let's put it down in the scrap zone okay this is where the cloud's going to get brighter so i got to add lots of white and this is how we're going to make it glow from the inside as we're going to make it yellower or rather we move the color toward yellow as it moves toward the inside of the cloud. But then as I get toward the edges, I'm gonna add this darker and redder color in order to get the effect of the yellow being the part that's glowing. So I put red around here like this. See, and I can add, add some some depth to my cloud that way too. Put some red up in here. Anywhere I put this darker, redder color creates an edge that wraps back away from away from the face of the cloud. And so I'm just being careful to try to make 
inward gradients. It blends this way. I leave, I leave the sharp edge on the, on the outer edge of each part. So I just splat some, some paint down like that, but then I go to this inside edge of that paint that I just put on, and that's where, that's where I blend. I'm getting some other colors lifting up from underneath and going in there, but I kind of like the look of it. As long as my my average color has this pattern visible, you know, I think it's going to be good. Get a nice big glowing cloud on here. Get some more white. Get some more white and get this brighter color. I can go the other way too. So here I'll blend, since I'm working with the bright color now, here's where I blend out toward the edge. So I go here. So bright color blends toward the edge. Dark color blends toward the middle, away from the edge. So I can grab this and anywhere I see my bright color, I'm just putting it down and blending out like this to get this effect of a big, big glowing pink cloud. So maybe that's more red than I really need right there. That's pretty bright. I am liking the, my imagination's filling in a lot of blanks here. So, you know, sometimes I'm looking at it thinking, yeah, that's awesome. It's really coming together. But, uh, for those of you that is not in your imagination, you know, it's a different experience, I'm sure. I, I have found as I'm researching, I'm really researching right now how to draw people. So I've been doing some Instagram posts and of, of my progress. I'm trying to make some better updated how-to videos on the subjects, but I found that I needed a lot of learning. And so as I was doing it, uh, I noticed that when I'm in the moment and I'm excited about what I'm doing, my imagination says it looks great because it's it's seeing it's seeing, it's like ingrained in in my brain, you know, and it's seeing what I want to see. So the same imagination that, that helps me see what needs to happen works against me, and tells me that it looks good when it doesn't. So I, maybe you've had similar experience, or or you've. Uh, you know, you deal with the same thing, maybe. So maybe I'll have to take take a, a a little bit of time when the paint dries a little more. I'm getting a lot of the lot of the blues in there, and and I do like this. I do like this, but you know what? Here, let's just add some purple here. Let's just shift it more more toward purple. We'll use this magenta. We'll go like this. Put some of that in there. Kind of separate these clouds and so i i was getting all that that color popping up from underneath so maybe i'll just not try to make it so red maybe we'll just go a little more toward purple there we go so if i just look for every little edge on here and just make sure that none of my edges have a gradient on the right side they all have a gradient on the left side, then then it's going to cause this cloud to have this wrapping around perspective to it. You know, so I just look for an edge and make sure that it blends dark to light, moving this way, blends this way. But then all of my hard edges, like see this purple shape right here, it blends toward the middle. I didn't mean to do that. Toward the middle of the cloud, and it doesn't doesn't go the other way. So all of my edges are around around the outside all right i'm just going to go up in here we're going to make this like a monster cloud way up in here right there and then this one i'm going to brighten up let's put a little bit of yellow in there and some white because wherever it gets yellower it's going to get lighter as well so we'll make this cloud glow a little bit in here just put that put that bright color right in there Grab a little bit of this magenta and yellow and magenta do make a red. So, you know, red is not necessarily a primary color any more than anything else is. Like I said, it's just a matter of can you mix it? 
but the red that it makes is not as red as red pigment. So in that sense, this is what I mean when I say every color is a primary. It's just that, you know, if you really want the purest form of a color, if you want your most saturated color, then then you don't get it from mixing. You always have to settle for a muted version of a color if you're mixing. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm almost done with this cloud. We're going to put a little more white in here. Looking for my light spots and just putting my light color in those light spots and blending to the outside to get just... just the suggestion, because I kind of lost my details in it, of a cloud that's just, you know, fluffing up this way, just to get that perspective. Yeah, okay, I'm satisfied with that. So I'm gonna go up in here, put a little bit more in. Let's put a nice, nice big darker shadow on that area. That'll, that'll make this really pop out. That'll be fun to kind of have this hopefully popping up from in front of this one. This will kind of go down behind it. Then I'll get some yellow and put it in here. Get some color in that guy. Blend them together like this. This will just kind of gradually disappear down into here like this then I feel like a little bit of blue would be good in here because that's kind of intense. So we'll go like this, and this will help this to kind of disappear into the back, not disappear, go back. It'll help it to go into the background. So we'll put some blue and white on there, make this a grayer color further away. I'm not sure if there's like some real physiology to that, why blue recedes or if it's just our expectations. I'm, you know, people will always have a quick answer when you, when you propose these things, but I'm not so quickly convinced by any of them at this point. All I, all I know is that when I, when I put a gray blue in the painting, it very rarely comes forward. It mostly goes back. You know, and so a lot of things I think we perceive because because it's what we've what we've learned things are since we first first saw. And then other times I think, no, maybe there's like some programming that actually makes that happen. I'm not sure. Jury's still out on that one. All right. There, now I've got, I've got kind of some depth with that clouds coming up in front. This one's floating out in front of that one. I'm trying to get a lot more depth in my sky these days, you know. I, I like seeing more than just, just one layer of, of clouds. Okay, so then we'll put some little, little stars in there. And then down here, I think we need mountains. So I'm going to start putting mountains in there. Let's see what's uh, in the comments. It'll be fun to see uh, what we've got down here. So uh, let's see here. I was quite giddy when you gave me a shout out. All right. Well, give me another one. Melissa Lee. <laughs> Always wanted to come see you in Flagstaff. Oh, man, I love it when people come by. If, if you're ever able to come through Flagstaff, just send me a message. You know, uh, you can email joe at muraljoe.com let me know you're coming and uh, i love meeting up with people coming through my town it just feels like such an honor when that happens i think i somehow subconsciously learned a little bit while observing my dad paint when i was a kid says laurel lee laurel laurel lee yes me too my dad you know it was it was always drawing and I was always so inspired. His control of lines is phenomenal. He is a naturally gifted man. I was just the only one in the family that was obsessed with just always doing it, you know. But I come from, I, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't make the genes that are responsible for, for the ability. I, I was 
I was this way because my family was this, this way before me. And it got passed on to me, you know, this love of, of creating and shapes and lines. I think for me, the uh, I am most bent on the love of shapes and lines. When I would see my dad draw lines that were just swooping, he would use pinstripe vehicles with paint. He would draw pictures for us too. <clears throat> too and, and just the shape of the, those lines was so mesmerizing and awesome to me. When I do a mountain, I'll go like this. I think, I don't know what color I'm going to make this mountain, but I feel like some kind of a real muted purple would be great. You want to see something fun? Guess what green and purple make? Okay. They make a gray blue, but it's got to be like this phthalo green, you know, and a magenta. So this is one way to get a blue gray is just to mix those two colors. I think that's a fun one because I can use that combo. I can use the magenta to do the reflection on green water. The magenta turns the green bluer. The green turns the magenta bluer. It ends up being blue water. And so it's, it's just such a fun thing to use those two bright colors to paint something. Okay, so I think we need a slope in here and I'm gonna add some white and I'm gonna adjust this as I go. So let's go like this. Adjust as I go the darkness of it, you know, color. Let's put a mountain in there. Maybe go over here and swoop up again. I'll tell you a tip to painting mountains. However pointy you want to make your mountains, make them less. Because, you know, all of my observations for the years I've been painting, including myself, is that it is human nature to identify a peak in nature as steeper than what it is. Because when we go to reproduce it, you can test yourself, test yourself. Go observe a peak somewhere, waves on water, mountains, any little bump that leaves a shadow. Draw it and then check it, measure it, do something to measure it. I, I think that you'll come to the same conclusion that it is normal to make it steeper than it is. So I found that if I always just go less steep than what I'm imagining the angle to be, then... I, I get uh, more of the result I'm looking for. Okay. We're going to go like that. And looks like that's a little bit on the green side. So I'm going to add a little more of this one. A little more of that purple. So here's a technique I do a lot with the, with the brush like this is I... I use the long end of it. So this is the long end right here. And I smash that long end onto the canvas. And what's accomplished by that is a, is a uh, much even more evenly distributed rounder brush stroke than if I go this way. Then I get this line and it's hard to just get a dab. Just, you know, it's where I just have little dabs of color. So when I want something more more in a, in a rounder shape, I use that long end. And for the, for the most part, I'm just using different amounts of pressure with that same point. So now I'm just grabbing water and making my paint flow a little bit better. So I create shapes across the top of this by just touching the top with that little point and dragging down. And I get those little bumps. Go like this, and then maybe I don't know, make make another little peak in there, and we'll make some some higher peaks. And then I think we need a little bit more of this magenta color in there. Let's go like this. I like that purple in the shadows. Beautiful. I love purple shadows. Blue violet, you know, blue violet shadows just get me every time I'm mesmerized by it. Okay, then we're going to go like this, blend that out a little bit more. Might be cool to see a little bit of a haze in there. What do you think? Maybe put like some 
some lighter colored haze at the bottom? Or should I leave it dark? I'll do the haze. Hi, Joe. Great to see you there. Thanks for keeping us inspired. Oh, thank you very much, Isfari. Devi Das. I hope I said that right. That's my best attempt. Okay, let's go like this. Put a little bit. This is a trick I learned from Bob Ross. You know, you just whip it out. I'm going to have to think of something to go in here because that's just a, a blob of, of unmixed paint there. Now, I always get tricked. You know, I, I got to be sensitive to my angle. If you're painting at an angle, you know, watch out because it's hard to make level lines. You'll look at it square. You know, you'll, you'll look at it square and say, oh, that's tipped up to the right, which it is. And so I'm going to go this way just a little bit. Here's a way to evenly distribute paint. You'll find that you get, you know, you're trying to mix, 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 right? You're trying to blend paint. So instead of dragging, dragging, dragging until it's even, go to your brightest spot, go to your darkest spot, go to your brightest spot, go to your dark spot, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. Bright, dark. And pretty soon your paint is much more evenly distributed. Watch this. Now we go like this. Now I have a nice even distribution of those colors with the exception of a few little splotches in here. So bouncing around is much more effective than, uh, than uh, gradually trying to stretch it out like pizza dough. <laughs> That's just what came to mind. Okay, now here's this color. Like This is fun. This is that rust color. I'm going to use this to do highlights on this mountain like this. That and white. Okay, I've just decided that I want the light to be coming this way, like this, because it looks like it could be. Okay, I'm just going to go right side of anything that looks like it could be in the light, but maybe it's mostly just hitting the face. So maybe I'll just very subtly orient the light to the right side, but, but not too extremely. In other words, I won't put real sharp divides. I'll, I'll just put gradually darker highlights as I move left, but maybe I won't make real big obvious edges where it goes from light to shadow so that the light is just a little bit oriented. So it looks like it's behind me, you know, the light's shining from behind me, it's up in the sky, shining this way. Let's see what red does. Put that in there. Yeah, there we go. Just get a good highlight color. I might need to darken my shadows a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. What am I going to do right here? I don't know what to do right there. Tree? Something in the foreground? Yeah, probably. Here, let's just continue the mountain for now so I can see my picture. Get a good visual. So all I'm doing is just, just blobs of paint, you know? And I'm just, I think what I'm paying the most attention to is the color, the color that I'm using. And I'm just having patience that when I finally get that color dialed in, you know, I just... I'm trusting that arriving at the right color is going to make that look less like a blob of grayish red and more like an actual highlight. So I'm feeling the need for brighter color. I'm going to mix it off site here. I'm going to go down here and go orange, put some white in there like this. There, now I got a much brighter orange in comparison. And I feel like that's going to get me some more dynamic results. But look how fun that I have that, that more gray result under it. So this, now it kind of has a nice transition from the darkness to the light. Well, that's a Bob Ross moment right there, isn't it? Just drag that across and get light. <laughs> 
I was always just so mesmerized. He is so awesome. Definitely, uh, he wasn't a role model for me when I was young, but when I took to painting, I found myself asking so many times, how did Bob Ross get such great results so fast? You know, that's what really got me about it was not the level of realism, but the such such a result and such little effort. You know, it was fantastic. He was such an inspiring, inspiring guy for me. Okay, I'm gonna go a little brighter on this mountain. I really want it to glow. Let's go up here to this peak. Put a few dots across the top here. Maybe just a few little highlights going down into this valley, but not much. And then, you know, whenever I have, and you know, whenever I have a color going to a very different color, look where they blend. This is where it's important to remember the value of a transition color or a midtone. A lot of people will just call it a midtone, but you know, I just have different purposes for intermediate color. So I, I like to identify this as a, as a transition color because I'm losing color right here, and so I'm going to put this purple in there magenta and i'm going to put that everywhere that this orange is trying to mix with that purple so that i have a more natural looking transition from light to shadow most of the time when two very different colors not all the time but when two very different colors with paint mixed together it ends up being greener than what natural light would end up doing if natural light were mixing. You know, paint mixes, you get a result. When light mixes, you get a different result. So in order to get a result more like light, less like paint, I need to replace the magenta color that is, that is filtered out by the mixing. And so that's the purpose of putting this in here and just blending, blending, blending until I don't see the magenta anymore. I just see a shade of gray that's a little more purple than the rest so that that light has a more natural flow from the shadow to the light. And I feel like it looks a little more magical too. Yeah, all right, cool, there we go. Now, in here, I really feel like it'd be cool to see some kind of a shadow in here. I wanna see a kind of a grayish shadow on this cloud. Yeah, now it looks like it's coming out over the mountain. Oh yeah, yeah, that was, that was a good addition. I don't mean to congratulate myself. I mean, you know, I just, I just love my, I just love my job, that's all. Okay, so I'm going to darken this up a little bit. So the same way I got this color, watch. Blue and red is going to give me a very similar result as phthalo green and magenta. So just mixing these opposite colors, there's always more than one way to arrive at a color, at a result. Well, if it's not a primary. Let's just edit that, edit that statement. If it's not a primary, there's more than one way to get there. Okay, what was it, red and blue? Yeah, red and blue. I'm just getting the lightness right there. Now look how similar that is to my, to the gray that I made from phthalo green and phthalo blue. I call them that, you know, even though it's they're just cans of paint, maybe they don't get called that on the shelf. That That's, that's the pigment they're using, it's phthalo green and Thalo blue. And I want to go a little darker so that you really see that, that silhouette of this mountain. I want to make this the uh, light and shadow a little more dynamic. So I'm going to put some more contrast in there. So let me get this purple and just go into these shadows. Just put a few dark spots, maybe make this ridge show up a little bit more. And by leaving it a little bit unmixed, look, it'll give me detail in my shadows, which I always think is a real nice touch in pictures, rather than making the shadow just an absence of, of detail. I, I always like 
maybe detail is not the right word, but you know, little little accents that are in there that that show some things happening. I always think it looks good when in the shadow you can see shape and texture, texture, texture in the shadows. There, let's call it that. That's what I'm trying to to describe. Now I feel like we need some. We need like a silhouette of some trees in there. So what color do I use for that? I'm thinking blue and blue and black for something nice and dark because this is like an evening scene now and I've got the tip of this mountain's in the light. So down here, this is not gonna be in the light. I'm not gonna put bright light on here. So I'm just gonna, gonna have an evening scene here. I'm looking at some comments here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Textures in the shadow. Yeah, that's the thing. Epitome Hawk. Epitome Hawk. Agrees. Agrees with that. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's cool. I hope I said that name right. Sorry. It's kind of fun. That's a fun thing about hosting a YouTube channel is trying to get all the usernames pronounced. I think that that uh, is just some bonus entertainment. <laughs> I'm not that free yet. Yeah, I'm <laughs> free. Yeah, so I I didn't read all the comments in the strand, but you know, uh, having having freedom, you know, to create what's on your mind. This is something we all desire, right? As creative people, the pinnacle of creativity is going straight from thought to production and seeing what's in your mind come out. And, and this is what I have, I've always, it's always been my primary goal. And I, and I feel like because, because my primary goal was not immediately to sell the canvases. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I want you to sell your work. I want you to, I just, I just was obsessed than the, with the how we all have different roles to play you know and i really felt like i just i just needed to figure out what are the tools what makes this happen and i was willing to to um sacrifice everything else i mean i would just trash something if i couldn't figure out how i did i don't care if it looked good i would trash it if i couldn't figure out how i did that because i was ultimately after the ability to do it whenever whenever i wanted So that's just always been my pursuit. And my mind just never stops asking the question, how is this done? What makes it happen? You know, there's a lot of things I still have lots of questions about, you know, but freedom is gained. I've gained a lot of freedom and I and I will be honest, it's, it's nice. It's very fun to be able to sit here and talk with you while I say what I'm gonna do before I do it. And then, uh, and then just show how it works. You know, this is, this has always been my hope. You guys really are a dream come true for me. Just, you know, giving me attention while I show my findings. It's really what I, what I love doing. Okay, so I was just building the the silhouette, just building the shapes here of my of my background forest scene. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Right there. So I'm just building the shape, and I want it. I want to have highlights, but the question is, would I really see green in there? I'm just going to try it. You know, in all of this purple evening light, I'm not convinced that I would want to see a lot of green. So I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow. Yellow does turn a little bit green when it hits black or gray or any color, really. Well, I guess not red or purple. Okay. I was wrong. Turns green when it hits black, though. So I'm going to put a little bit in there and maybe just have that, that tiny bit. I'm just going to settle for that, that tiny bit of green because uh, I, I don't want real vivid greens in, in, in this color scheme that I've got going. Oh, man, I do like the way that looks, though. Let's put a little more. See what happens if I go just a tiny bit more. You're about to witness me overdoing something. Put some yellow in there. I always see it coming too. You know, I'm like, Joe, oh, you you're gonna overdo it. It's a nice effect. Just leave that nice effect. But 
I'm so obsessed with them. Yeah, but I want to try more and see if it's better. I, you know, maybe this will be like a enlightening experience. Maybe I'll find a new trick. <laughs> and then I overdo some. But that's how you find limits. You know, this is what this is what all of my kids have done. They they have found the limits. They have pushed the boundaries and found that that point where they get a punishment. Which is never severe. It's never. Well, we don't. We don't do. We don't do severe punishments. I don't. <laughs> Not mean to my kids. You can ask them. Okay. Actually, I was the worst of all. I had to get you know my taste of being a bad, being a bad guy. Before I learned to appreciate what it means to care for others. And uh, really, my wife, she, my wife taught me how to do that. I, I uh, was so mesmerized by how naturally she was concerned about right and wrong and how she treated others, things that I just had never considered in life. Because, you know, as a child, I, I grew up five brothers total, four brothers. We've lost one. Johnny was the youngest. He's the one that passed away. Uh, so there were five of us running around. And, and we just... We would just go outside and play from dawn to dusk. I didn't realize what freedom that was until until I grew up and had kids. I was like, oh, man, we had such freedom. And so what we would do is vandalize things. We were terrible. It was awful. If we saw a window, we'd just think of ways to break it. If we saw a building that could be broken into, we'd break into it. It was terrible. And, you know, I went too far enough times. It's when you hurt a person. It's when you really hurt a person that you have real regrets. And I went too far enough times. I thought, this is not what I want to be. So we find the limits. This is what we do. So I like overdoing my paintings for the same reason, because, you know, I'm finding the limits. So I'm going to make that. I'm going to make that green a little bit less green see that magenta a little bit though because i do like the look of some of that green in there you go in here and let's put some water in now water is the best isn't it i love doing water i love setting the stage and getting to the part where where Laura, Laura Lee says, I wasn't an angel either, yeah, LOL. Yeah, that's good. It's good to realize that in life. You know, it makes you appreciate your parents more. Okay, so how am I going to do this water? It's basically just going to be the image upside down. You know, I'm not going to put this like I'm looking down into the water. For the most part, I'm thinking I'm looking out. The angle is just bouncing, skips like a rock. I just get the upside down image of of everything here and so the question that i ask with water is what color is it what color is is it bouncing and i don't know i don't have the answer to that i'm thinking of it i'm going to put a dark reflection in there let's start with a dark reflection that means deeper water so if if under the water is is darker than what's over the water. If the water is deep, it tends to be darker because it blocks light. Now, if water is real shallow, it may be that the sun strikes. You know, we've all seen a we've all seen a sunlit puddle or something where the where you see glowing rocks coming out from under. So that's a situation where it's not darker. But let's say we're, we've got deep water. Then I want my reflection to be darker than the source because the reflection is some midpoint between the two colors. It's the mix of the two. So if I want to make a reflection of these trees, I'm going to use very, very strictly horizontal lines. So this is something that immediately can cause water not to look like water, is any kind of texture. We're super sensitive to texture. And so any, any brush strokes that are not going as level as I can make them will very quickly be interpreted as something besides water because of perspective. So I'm going to be very careful about the uh, angle. So I got to turn, I got to turn this and look as my line level. And so I got to go a little bit up on this part. 
Got to pull out the old contracting cut brush here. <laughs> Those skills came in handy as a mural painter. So I'm going to put a body of water in here, and I'm going to build it out of as level lines as I can make. And then as it gets closer, the, the boundary of, of those lines, my shapes are just these tight little zigzags, all horizontal as it's in the background. But when I get down here in the foreground, it will enhance my perspective if I make it, if I make the shapes a little more vertical is, is what I'm trying to say. So we're going to go magenta and yellow, and we're going to get a real dull orange to create some reflection of that mountain right there. So let's get a little more magenta or a lot more. Okay, so this is our foreground. And so it's dark water, right? Dark water, but it's got color on it. We can add, we can add a little white. We can get some more reflection. Let's go right under here to get the reflection of that mountain. Now here's an illusion that always tricks me. This looks similar in brightness to this, right? Looks similar in brightness. Watch what happens when I grab this and I put it on here. Look at that dark spot right there. It's not the same. That's the widest area from down here. On here makes that dark spot. So the surroundings, you know, always play tricks on me. I don't know, maybe, maybe it looks normal to you, but for me, it always tricks me. I think I'm lighter uh, than I am color-wise. So now I'm just going to use real, this is a good time to pull out the detail brush for tighter lines. You know, I'm going to get real small lines. So I don't need to get too tricky with texture. I just need to be careful to keep it all very consistently horizontal. And then this is going to look like distant water because water lays level. Of course, we all know that it lays level from gravity and there's not enough there's not enough angle on your perspective to change that very much. Even if these waves are flowing kind of sideways, it's not going to be that much change. These lines are always going to look very level in the distance. So here we have some, some texture going side to side. And I'll use bigger strokes in the foreground and smaller strokes in the background. Let's see what happens if I go a little brighter. I think some little highlights in there will be nice. Let's go a little brighter with some red and yellow now. That'll get me a brighter orange. Put some white on it. And then I'm just going to put some horizontal lines. Try to target the area that's right under this mountain. And just trying to get real horizontal lines. I'm hitting the edge of the canvas like this. Look, here's a side view. I got the brush like this and I'm going like that, just pulling back like that. That's how I'm getting that shape. I know that's a little bit hard to see from, from your angle. And then of course I'm going to have less reflection as I go down. So here is where I can, I can ditch this real red color. I don't want to see that. Let's go something more blue. Because look at all this blue up in here. And maybe the water's blue, you know. So underwater colors, darker, we'll go up here. And just kind of make a gradient that goes, goes up, gets lighter. I guess I could make an edge on it. So that's a more realistic approach to it. The colors are enough to tell the story. But if I want it to feel a little more realistic, I can try to kind of cut the upside down shape out and I'm being conscious of where the horizon would be even though I don't have the horizon identified or painted in this picture the horizon would be where this water you know horizon is always relative to a level surface so relative to this water the horizon of this water would be where the furthest visible point of this water would be uh, height wise in my painting so I'm thinking, and it's just a judgment call. It's just somewhere behind these trees. So I make that my center line. 
for my reflection. The horizon is the center line, not the edge of the water. And so I, I see that being a, a real point of, of struggle for many painters is finding the, the right place to divide and make that upside down mirror image. And so just remember, you're looking for the horizon, not the edge of the water. So I'm just trying to level out my lines here. I feel like I angled these a little bit and that angle kind of interferes with my, with my look. All right, now I'm gonna get more of this dark color. Once I get this mixed in, you know, to a, a dark color that I like, anywhere I put a little spear shaped stroke, it's gonna be the face of a wave coming toward me where the water tips down and is facing toward me. So I can just put those little dashes in here. And of course, I'm not gonna put them over my nice little reflection spots. I'm gonna put them where I already have dark areas. So this helps me to organize the flow of my water is, you know, I just start with those rough horizontal strokes and then I gradually, gradually fill in where I start to identify which direction the water is facing, you know, the, the little waves. I just kind of let the brush do the work at the beginning, but once I get this far, then I have a good template to say, okay, I've got the faces of waves showing. So now I'll start filling some of those in and I'm making them, I'm making them bigger as they get closer. And then all of this horizontal texture will gradually begin to look more and more like water because now it's, it's the way the texture is organizing the colors. It's just the way it's organized. I could do this, the, the, it's <laughs> more, more. I must be slowing down as I'm getting older, man. I get tongue tied, I think, more frequently than ever. My mind is still thinking, but my mouth isn't spitting it out as fast as I'm thinking it. So anyway, the texture organizes the color. This is what makes the look of water. And this can be done with pencil. I, I uh, can just do it with, with the uh, lights and darks with the pencil and create the same look just being very careful. This is one of the things we did down at that school. In that uh, recent video I posted, going down to Rio Rico to see my mom and, and visit the school where she works. Had a great time hanging out with, with the crew down there and talked about drawing water, achieving the look of water. And this is, this is what it was about, was keeping this texture very consistently horizontal and then making it smaller and tighter as I go back. Okay. Well, you know, I don't wanna rush this painting and um, I, wanna, I wanna do this again. So maybe I, can, maybe I can just fire up the computer and do this again in just like the next couple days because I'm not doing a lot. So I'm gonna wrap up the edges of this water and I want to put more things in this painting and, and uh, maybe start another one as well. But since it's kind of been a long time, I know that, they, that you all have things to do too. So uh, I want to say thank you so much for joining me for the long attention span, being able to hang out with me. I, I really appreciate that. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue this picture. So I'll make sure that I send out a notification. If you're not on the email list, you can get there by going to muraljoe.com. You can, you can get on the email list if you want, want to be notified. But I know that YouTube's pretty good about letting you know these days too. Okay, so back in here, I think I want to make this getting further away. So what I'm gonna do is now switch to black. I don't wanna see blue in there because I've got water that's probably not so blue reflecting background that's not so blue. I'm not gonna use blue, I'm gonna use black so that it is now reflecting these more greenish colors because I wanna turn this into a river. 
So I need this to be going way back into the trees. It's amazing once you have, once you have the picture defined, once you have the information, uh, it's amazing how we interpret a, a tiny little a tiny little spot on a canvas as so much three-dimensional information. Suddenly this little inch of detail across the horizon represents depth and texture and an environment. It's all there. So so imagination is is the most powerful tool to paint with. Uh, and that is the viewer's imagination. There are tricks to get get the viewer to imagine the picture and then once that's done i think most of the time it's a loss if you interfere with that once once imagination is filling in the blanks nothing more needs to be needs to be painting so i always consider it my best work when i can cause a viewer to imagine what what i'm trying to paint if i cause them to imagine it you don't imagine it being wrong. You know what I mean? Like, you just, oh, that looks like looks like a distant forest back there. Uh, if your imagination is doing it, you know, you're just looking at a block of gray saying it looks like a distant forest, except it looks like a distant forest that has a bunch of crooked tree branches. No, you don't see that because <laughs> that information doesn't exist in there. So the imagination does a great job. And this is when I feel like probably the best working definition of going too far, doing overworking, doing too much. I was always so frustrated with with that kind of criticism. I don't love any any kind of criticism because the creative process can be so, you know, so snuffed out by that. But to me, that makes the most sense. This is what going too far is. It's actually putting details that tell the story and don't let the imagination tell it in the imagination's way. Me and my brother, Ben, we always talk about movies, movies being so similar to painting. And it's just, you know, he would agree. He would agree right away. Oh yeah. You know, he's, you, you go too far with telling exactly what things are supposed to mean. It actually subtracts meaning. <laughs> it doesn't add it. So I want this to look like a, I'm thinking a deeper body of water would be nice. And so the, right now it looks kind of shallow and I'm just thinking, huh, what can I do to make it a little deeper? I just see some fun little waves in here and I'm enhancing them. Grab that color. I break all the rules. Wait, that's, I break all the rules. I'm sure they are meant to be broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, agreed. Agreed. Rules are meant to be broken, meant to be followed, and meant to be broken. You know, to me, rules are just like a if-then kind of relationship. We experiment with either breaking or following them to get different results, and then we decide what results we prefer. I'm going to try some different colors in here. You know, I, I don't know why I put that color on there just now. Let's see what happens when I mix that with black. Make some shadows. I got some brown color in here. I guess it's just kind of a dirt bank. Let's put some white on there. Let's do that. Okay, okay. I need to take a break and look at this with fresh eyes, decide where I want to go with it next. I'm actually not sure what I want to put in the foreground. You know, oh, this will be the value of taking a break too, because then I can I can see what your thoughts are on it. Maybe maybe some of you've got a good idea of what I can do here. But I see right away that I can add perspective just with some texture. So if I add these white highlights, I'm going to go over them a lot so they're not so white. 
just the presence of many horizontal strokes will cause this ground to become more level going back rather than just a blob of paint. So texture is, is a powerful tool. I'm just adding a real horizontal texture like that. Here, we'll put a little bar of it coming out into the water. Maybe it's like some rocks to kind of overhang. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. That's a good idea. Maybe like a big rock in here would be cool. We've got a little, we've got a valley in here. Yeah, I, can't, I feel like, like like an embankment would be neat in here. Let's try it. Let's try it. Last thing, I'm just going to complete this edge right here. So maybe right here I just go uh, dark colors, dark colors with blue. And let's put some red. Get that purple. Get some purple reflection. Oh, yeah, big bright sky like that. That needs some. That needs some red reflection, which is going to turn purple on this. Let's grab some white. Go here. Can't you just see a guy fly fishing on this stream? It's totally what I'm going to do. And I'm going to put little star. I'm going to put like a bunch of millions of little dots. Flick it with the brush in there. I might have to repair the stuff around it to make that happen too. Okay. There, now we've got some, now we've got some purple to represent the reflection of these clouds right here. And, and all I need to, to finish that off is, is to put this kind of texture on it. So the color is one step, but I really need to get these dark colors and put these waves. Look here, it puts the light spot, and then I come over here, it puts the dark spot. That's kind of fun. Okay, and then up here, it's gonna get darker. So let's put some black on there. Yeah, that's the better spot. Black under these trees. Yeah, I'm, I'm imagining, so I stopped for a moment. I, <laughs> that was one of those moments when my wife would say, I lost you, didn't I? I just, I got lost in imagining what was, what was over here while I was being here. Got real quiet. But I'm thinking maybe I'm, I make like a big rock up there. So it's like a valley between big rocks, kind of like in Yosemite. We were just there last year, two years ago. Man, what an awesome trip. A big thanks to a very generous uh, YouTube YouTube follower. She shared her, her uh, cabin with us, let us stay there for a little bit. And man, we had an awesome time. Okay, let's put that dark color in there. We've got some reflection. And so then, then I'm thinking like some kind of an embankment that, sl that slopes down right here and, and goes back. But I've got these trees here. And so I got to think about this. I don't, you know, I want these to be close. I want this to look far and, and big. Hmm. How am I going to do this? This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put I'm going to put these going back like this. Okay. This is coming to me. It's coming to me while I'm talking. Last thing. I can always redo more stuff in here, but right now, I'm going to make this be a hill. It goes back. 
and it's going to get lighter as it goes back. And since it's getting lighter into this orange atmosphere, that's just going to turn this green kind of gray. So I'm just using white to make it more gray as it, as it goes back. Now it's going to look further away right there, like this. Make it darker down here. And then we're going to come down in here and creates a little more unexpected little changes in the in the formation. Just make it look more organic, you know. And then I'll put those same yellow highlights. Big ones down here. And we're going to go smaller and smaller as they go back. And closer together. So here we're just doing little spots. little tiny spots so that this looks like it's getting further away we're going to create some perspective by making those shapes smaller as they go back man if you come to arizona if you come to arizona if you come to flagstaff when you go down to sedona you got to go to sedona and just look at the slopes of green trees going up into the red rocks they're kind of the color of these clouds more of an orange than a red. That always frustrated me that they were called red rocks. They're orange. But, man, is it beautiful. So beautiful. I think we just get used to seeing it all the time. Maybe take it for granted a little living in Arizona. I do, anyway. Uh, but after this whole quarantine thing's over, <laughs> it's going to look that much more awesome. Okay, I'm going to put more black in here. Let's go here, put black in there. So I'm going to bring this down closer to the water's edge so that I can maintain, make sense out of this perspective, you know, bring this down closer, make an embankment. You can always bring things closer by darkening the shadows. Shadows change more dramatically. If you think about it, think about it a picture is light you know uh, a, a nature scene is light shadows are less less light it's the absence right so as it goes further into an atmosphere and starts mixing with this light that's back in here this atmosphere it is these it's the shadows that will be most dramatically changed because they don't have light to offer so they're very dramatically changed well something that has a percentage of light is not changing as much so by darkening the shadows coming forward and lighten, lightening the shadows moving back the magic is in what you do with those shadows a lot more than what you do with the highlights so the shadows is where all that all that work and color change delivers you know good good results to get get perspective okay so now let's put some white highlights in these trees and i got to make sure that i I'm moving quick to, to make sure that it mixes and doesn't stay this bright white because I don't want that real light color. I just want a real subtle highlight. I'm trying to gray this yellow a little bit. I don't want it to be so yellow so green it's more of a green once it mixes and then i just got to make sure that i have more more of the gray back in here so this is something that i want to adjust a little bit is make the make the background a little more gray ah there you can see that better now the glare makes it look a little lighter than what it really is, you know. So I'm just using little dabs of this color, making sure that it's just like the clouds. I'm not really thinking about where I want to put trees as much as putting gradients on brush strokes. It's just a system of 
put in a dab of color and then making it blend downward, leaving the edge on the top of the brush stroke so that you see trees emerging out of shadows. So same thing if I came back and did it with black, just like when I was doing the cloud, I, I brought my bright color out from the middle. This one has a dark color in there, so I can take my black. Just like I blended the light color downward, I'm blending the dark color upward. Then I get some nice shadows in between my, my trees in here. And then I think some of this color will be a nice be a nice mix with that green. Well, yeah, my green's kind of dry, so it's not gonna mix. So let's go like this: black and yellow. Get some of our green back in there. Nice and dark, but then it's it's going to change gradually to this browner color. Let's do a little more of that. Black, yellow. Got a little too much of that yellow. Let's get more black in there. Get some dark shadows. And I kind of like just leaving it a gradual transition to a color that's more like dirt. So what I do is I just get get my dark color in there. And then as soon as I hit that with white, it's gonna create highlights of ground coming out from under these trees. Okay, so I'll hit my most red, the most orange that's still left in there. That's where I'll hit, hit with white. And then I'll just do a few little strokes going up, up into this dark color. Then I can make the ground emerging out from under trees that way. Let's get a little bit more of that white, tiny bit more. Yeah, there we go. And then I'll, I'll see if I can kind of make the, the look of some, some rocks. Let me get, get, fancy painter's palette here because I'm running out of space. So what I'm going to do is make a little bit of hard edges, make some texture, like maybe we've got, got some uh, big boulders that have some divides in between them or something, just some texture on the ground. So I just barely pull this brush downward, just barely a slight downward stroke. And that nice sharp edge. This is why I'm so careful about doing the water, then the towel and keeping the shape of my brush so that I can do little shapes like this. I like keeping the, the brush nice and sharp like a knife. Okay, then we just need a little bit of shadow under that probably. So maybe some black. Let's go like this, straight down here. And then we ha we do have some light coming from the sky. So maybe I'll be a little more generous with the color. Just a little bit and I'll create a drop off. There we go. Put a few more little, I like that nice dark color in there. So I'm just going to do a couple little dabs where I already have cracks in there. I'm just seeing if I can get a little more of a blend, you know, a little more of a gradual transition into there. So, so it really looks like it goes up under, goes up under those trees.
Happy I caught this, says Nova. All right, cool. I'm happy you caught it too. Okay. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. It's just fun. I'm just enjoying the, the process of gradually turning this into something. I'm going to take a break and then see about what could be added to it for the next video. Oh, there we go. It's a little bit of an angle. Now it's got a bit of a bit of an incline going into it. Let's put a few little texture in the shadows. There, now the water feels a little bit deeper to me. It looks like it's got a drop off. It's got a little edge on it. But uh, a lot more could be done. So, so we'll call it a day. We'll call it a night for that one. And uh, I'll take a minute and see if I can catch up on a few comments here. <laughs> I'm, seeing, I'm seeing conversations between you all. This is good. Oh, thanks, Paula. That's very nice. You never get tired of it. All right, cool. Sam says, if you haven't been to his class in Flagstaff, you should make it a pilgrimage. It's a great time. Oh, thanks a lot, Sam. That's that's such a nice shout out. Hmm, this is an interesting question. Heavy metal ruined my life, 1971 says, if it's true that the horizon line must be level. Then would it be possible for Earth to have curvature? Yeah, so technically it is, it's probably curved, probably curved. And for that reason, you know, we don't see quite as high of a horizon if, if it was truly level. You know, as I was, I was reading like some math article looking at the, the geometry of it, you know, so yeah, I mean, there's a curve so that Changes the horizon a bit, for, but for painting purposes, I just consider it level. Many mahalos, <laughs> says Karen Marsh. All right. It's magical, Joe. Hey, thanks, Tamara. That's very nice. Thanks from Portugal. All right. Thanks for tuning in from Portugal. The spherical trigonometry calculation for globe Earth curvature is eight inches per mile squared. Whoa. I did not know that. That's pretty good, man. Very good. Now I'm inspired to carry on. Still lots of natural light left. West Coast Canada. All right. Thanks, Lean Triple. Went live again. What is today's day? Thursday? Tomorrow's Friday? I probably could just do it at some point tomorrow. Probably could do that. But I'm going to send out an uh, email. Don't mark my words on that. You know, I'm going to send out an email. So get on the mailing list uh, through MiralJoe.com. I, I got a big email list. And uh, I'll make sure that I, that I notify you and follow uh, Mural Joe on Instagram. Uh, I'll make sure that I post it there in advance as well. Because, you know, this ties me up for a while while I I am counted on in this house for more than just painting. So I gotta go, I gotta go be dad <laughs> for a little bit. How are you feeling, Joe? Uh, a, little, uh, a little bit sore in the throat, you know, but you know, it's it's a tiny thing. There's stuff, there's all kinds of little bugs and colds going around. Uh, it's it's on the up and up. I'm actually on the upswing of that. And so you know it's been like that for I don't know, a week and it's starting to feel good enough that I can that I can talk better on camera now. Uh oh, Corona. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whatever. I'm a medical doctor and you are my, my inspiration. Hey, all right, Victor. Thank you for being a doctor. Awesome job. 
<laughs> All right. I got to leave you guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I actually can't stop this video. Uh, I got to leave it running because I've got all this in the way of my mouse, and it's very hard to reach over it without, without damning things. It's so, okay. Hey, might as well chit chat for a little bit longer while I put some paint away. Let me put this down here. No stop. No stop. Oh man, thanks. Thanks. We're going to do it again. We're totally going to do it again. I think this is uh, I think this is the best live show interaction that I've experienced thus far. I'm sure that that's because so so many of us are stuck at home right now for sure. But nevertheless, uh, I want to thank you guys for the for the good time, for the privilege. Bye, says Epitome Hot Pay. Epitome, thank you for thank you for the comments and watching the videos. I appreciate it. Can you show off the painting painted ceiling again? Yeah, yeah, for sure I can. Yeah, here you go. Right there. This is my favorite spot right up here. I'm gonna show you my favorite spot. It's actually that that little spot in the in the middle. I like that. It's a little bit overexposed, but that overexposed area, that's that's my favorite right in there because I kind of had a, a shadow going across the tops of the clouds and it felt like, you know, a kind of depth in the clouds I had not yet achieved with other jobs. Like there's that back corner. You know, when I was making this, uh, there were a lot of clouds rolling by outside. It was it was rain season. Uh, it was September, you know. We had some good rain going. And so I, I had some real good inspiration. I was going outside, looking, coming back in and painting. It was pretty fun doing that job. The, the bad part about it, bad part about it was I kept editing the colors. So it was like, hey, I'll show you how to paint clouds on the ceiling. And then I adjusted the color. Actually, I'm going to adjust my color a little bit. <laughs> It's never good enough. I never find that perfect color. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Proverbs 28.9. I'm going to have to look up Proverbs 28.9. Jacqueline Owens. Hey, Joe, do you have a mirror behind you that you look at the painting in from time to time? Oh, I was, no, I have the camera. The camera does that. It shows the mirror image. Actually, seeing... And right now I, I have it on the computer screen. That's been a, a big, um, what is it? A immensely useful tool because seeing my picture shrunk down and turn around let, lets me see proportions that I was blind to when my eyes are numb to seeing it. But I'm sure that that's what you're talking about. You know, that's looking at something in a mirror. I definitely have tendencies. I Sorry, I keep making the camera refocus. I definitely have a tendency to do things lopsided you know and you reckon you start to see your tendencies when you look at your work flipped around in a mirror or shrunk down in a, in a camera screen it's really helpful and I, I recognized a lot of my natural tendencies to do things tilted and lopsided turned to, i did a person turned it around and i was like oh it's all crooked how did i not see that <laughs> it was amazing then i looked at my face in a video first time i saw my face in a video i thought Oh, my face is crooked. Is there anything straight in this world? <laughs> Not my face. Thanks again. Stay safe. Thank you, Terry. I'm finger painting over my canvas now, says Nancy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking around the tripod. <laughs> Take a photo. Watching it on the phone makes it small enough to see. Yeah, it's a good, good idea. Good idea. All right, all right, I gotta go. Okay, uh, get on the email list. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can make this happen again tomorrow. But get on the emailing list and, uh, and go to Instagram. Look there for updates on the next live show. I'm gonna do it soon because I want to finish, finish this painting and put like a little fly fisher guy in there, or maybe a Sasquatch. We'll see.